Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Lingua. I'm at the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute at the University of California, Irvine. We have developed a new procedure for nystagmus. It is an augmentation of a previously reported operation first described by Dr. Robert Sinsky. It involves removal of the front one half of the four muscles that govern the horizontal to and fro uncontrolled movement seen in nystagmus. It is a highly effective procedure. We have augmented the procedure by adding an additional four muscles to the operation to optimize eye alignment as well as quiet the nystagmus and to preserve side gaze. Perhaps the most common questions we receive are, do the eyes still move? How much does it quiet the nystagmus? What are the downsides? I hope the following videos of before and after images will illustrate the typical outcomes from this novel procedure. In this first slide, you see the first patient I operated in January 2013. He was 17 years old and his best vision was 2050. He wanted to drive, which requires 2040 or better. He had already had two surgeries for the nystagmus, both of which obviously failed to control the shaking. So the image on the left is after two traditional surgeries, but before the augmented Sinsky procedure. On the right, you see the quieting of the nystagmus, and he now sees 2025 in the distance, qualifying him for a driver's license. Most importantly, you see that he retains good movement side to side despite removal of the front half of the muscle. So the back one half of that muscle must still be operational to move the eye, but it does so without the nystagmus. I hope this answers the question, will the eye still move? In this still photo slide, you see the same patient looking up and down and right and left with little limitation. The downsides. Well, on the left, you see a young lady with the typical strabismus and nystagmus preoperatively. And in the early days when we performed the Sinsky procedure alone, there was a risk of developing exotropia or outward turning of the eyes that you see in the center images. However, she underwent secondary surgery successfully and is actually one of our best vision recoveries going from 2150 to 2060 in the distance and 2030 at near. In this still slide, you see how when we have to operate secondarily for the misalignment, there is limitation of side gaze to approximately 10 to 15 degrees. In the upper left, you see the images of a young lady with a large amplitude nystagmus and a strong desire to look only to the right and not to look to the left. And when she does look to the left, you'll see why. She certainly has a very large horizontal and vertical strabismus to avoid, and therefore she would look to the right. When we performed her repair, we performed an augmentation of the Sinsky procedure, which allowed her to develop quiet eyes and an elimination of the strabismus without even accounting for that. However, like the prior child in the early days of the augmentation, our side gaze was not as good as it could be. We knew we could do better. For the last year we have performed the procedure without any recurrence of strabismus that required secondary surgery. The latest iteration of the augmentation procedure quiets the nystagmus, it prevents secondary misalignment surgery, allows side gaze to persist, and does not risk eye circulation any more 
than any other routine eye muscle procedure. The latest augmentation procedure includes the four horizontal rectus muscles that shake the eye back and forth, and the anterior or front one half is removed. In addition, there are two oblique muscles in each eye which are repositioned on the globe, not removed, and those muscles constitute the augmentation that is used today. On the left, we see a young man with strabismus and nystagmus, a large inward turning, along with the uncontrolled shaking side to side. He underwent the Sinsky anterior extirpation of the horizontal rectus muscles and the augmentation as we now perform it. You see now his eyes are straight and they are quiet and he is able to still move them side to side despite the fact that we have removed the front portion of the horizontal rectus muscles. This is another example of a young man who suffered from retinopathy of prematurity. He had to have the left eye removed from complications of surgery. His remaining right eye had a beating nystagmus that required an unusual head posture to try and see the best he could. He underwent the augmented Sinsky procedure as well, and now you see him several months post-op with his eye quiet in the straight-ahead position and side gaze preserved to the right and the left of approximately 15 degrees. Even in a child with albinism, preoperatively you see him on the left, with iris transillumination and macular hypoplasia, demonstrating a preoperative best corrected vision of 2070, which is pretty remarkable for those findings. He had the typical pendular nystagmus seen in albinism. On the right, you see him following the Sinsky anterior extirpation with the augmentation of the oblique muscles, and you see a reduction in the nystagmus. He still has a very low amplitude, and perhaps this is because his macula is different than other patients. We haven't yet done enough albinotic patients to say for sure whether this is a universal finding or whether it was perhaps the result of not taking enough muscle. But his near vision, despite the macular hypoplasia at 13 inches, is 2020 binocular. In the distance, it remains 2050. We hope to see that as time goes by and the results mature, that his vision will improve. I hope these before and after images have helped answer some of your questions about what to expect with this operation. As always, as always, should you have any particular questions, feel free to email me at the address in the upper right corner of this slide and to consult our website for further information as it evolves. Thank you very much.